Welcome to Holistic Horseworks Talks. Join us with founder April Love as we talk about equine care. Learn what you can do to keep your horse happy, healthy, rideable, and sound through their 30s. Have a question you'd like to submit to the podcast? Just email April at holistichorseworks.com for a chance to get it featured on the next episode. In today's episode, April talks about how our horse's environment may be affecting their behavior and their assimilation of minerals and ultimately their immune system. I heard a story about a horse who was very agitated in his stall periodically. He would paw at the door, move about, not pacing like he's bored, but like, get me out of here. And it was it was a very unusual the owner was quite perplexed. More like agitated, like too much coffee and frazzled. So you need to look at, there's a couple things, um, power and water lines near his stall. So if they're fine outside the stall, but they go to a certain area and then they just, you know, are really cranked up. They're very sensitive to geo lines in the earth where they come together. That'll be like a certain area of the arena that all the horses don't want to go down to that corner. And you actually have to clear that with copper wire. We can get into that another time. But yeah, there's ways to clear that energy. But a lot of horses, look where the power lines and the power plugins running on the walls or the other side of their wall or underneath or even just main water lines. They just really feel that energy coming up their legs. And is that something that you have seen be periodic or is it once it starts, it's like always there? I was told that he's been doing it like about six times over the last six months. So it's not a continuous thing. And it was it was really um, sad (laughs) because you couldn't help him. I would start trying to know what time of day it might be happening. And if it's like the same time, you know, look at, okay, so it happened on the 14th last month and it happened on the 10th this month, but it was always at like 4 p.m. So what's going on at 4 p.m.? Is it happening at nine in the morning? Is it happening at one in the afternoon? Is it always different or is it always similar? The timing is similar. He's turned out all day. It's usually after he's eaten and then... um like seven, six, seven o'clock? Yeah, I would ask someone to kind of write it down and see if you can see a pattern. Okay. But I would still look to see about the water and the power because something might be getting turned on at that time of day and they can feel the vibrations. I went to look at some racehorses when I was teaching in the Netherlands. One of my students said, oh, you need to come look at these horses because I'm doing body work on them, but we just can't you know, figure it out. And this lady pulls out this beautiful Arabian mare and she's just rearing and body slamming and can't even get near her. And um, we went and looked at her stall and on the other side of the wall is where they plug in the electric fence and it's going tick, tick, tick. And it's like you can kind of handle that drip in the sink for a little while until it kind of builds up. And then, so we had talked about grounding that. She's very sensitive to the the power goes out. And then the grounding rods that you do the negative on is right next to the wall by her, you know, on the outside. And it was a stone building, you know, so if it's wet stone, you're still going to get kind of an electric current. And um, I also told the owner that she... um, needed more magnesium and a little bit more selenium. And this is not even being able to touch her, just, you know, asking what she needed to calm down. She's like, well, I feed her all that. And this woman that I met, she's a famous racehorse trainer over there and she's into muscle testing. She's really good at it. I said, you might be feeding it, but now you need to ask if she can actually assimilate it. And she did a little muscle testing and she went, no, she can't. She's not assimilating what I'm feeding her. Right. If you have tight acidic muscles and a tight body like this, you need to look at the surroundings, the agitation, and also the assimilation of, you know, what would calm her body down, magnesium and selenium. Can she absorb it? No. 
So that's why you'll see in my class and my workbook that I get into the zeolite detoxing of the animal to pull out mercury that blocks the magnet the uh, magnesium absorption and sulfur, I believe, is one that blocks the selenium absorption. And sulfur is also in MSM that a lot of people feed. In Hawaii, we have the volcanoes. So all the horses are selenium deficient, but it's because they can't assimilate it, not because it's not in the feed. So you really have to look at their environments, the time. Is there like another horse that he'd rather be with? Is it just one specific corner of the stall? And what's on the other side of that wall? You can put an electric meter outside of those plugs. And that's why people aren't supposed to be sleeping next to any kind of plug. And you'll find people with brain tumors, you know, all the um, walls and the new houses all have electric plugs on every single wall and where the left wall and the right wall um, comes out and meets is like where their pillow is so they're in line with all that and all it has to do is change your own electrical being and your own electrical pattern the same thing when you get in an airplane and that's what jet lag is you are an electrical being, energetic being, sitting inside a big metal thing in the sky that is running an electric current that is not your own. So it's kind of like, you know, you being really frizzy and frazzly. So that's why I'm saying, you know, are the lights coming on? Is something happening different in that electrical current field is something to look for and see what's going on with, you know, the time of day, what's outside a stall that's near that corner. You know, is all the waters being filled so he can feel the water going through or are the lights coming on or. Yeah, I don't know. Well, when I do the distance readings, um, one of the four things is what's anything in their environment bothering them. Mm -hmm. You know, the hay that they're eating, you know, something around them, EMS, the water source and the water source is coming up. 95% of all my readings now is a big factor and it doesn't have to be polluted. It can be high iron. Mm -hmm. high calcium something's gonna throw the horses out of balance so i'm recommending those inline water filters that you would put on for a motorhome or an rv just to at least get 30 to 70 percent of what is in the water not there so they can drink more pure water the overhead fly systems in the barns are terrible for the horses Oh, it's all organic, but it's not in the horse's normal diet and it's in their water. It's on their hay. It's in their shavings that they're breathing. What is that? Overhead fly spray systems in the big barns. They'll say, oh, it's permethrin or something flower from somewhere and it's all natural, but it's not in the horse's natural diet. And it is, it is misting down on them like once every couple hours and they're standing in the stalls. So it's in their water, it's on their hay, and it's in the shavings that they're breathing. And it's going to go in their lungs because right. they're going to breathe the mist in. So whether it is, you know, all organic or not, I mean, it is killing flies. It's still not something that's natural to their environment and it's stressing their liver, their kidneys, yeah. their autoimmune. Right. You know, like feeding dogs chocolate is supposed to be poisonous to them. Right, right. You know, it's not in their normal realm. Just like feeding corn oil isn't good for horses. They don't have a gallbladder. They don't have a way to digest the oils and the fats. Why do we have to supplement our horse's feed? So when people are saying, why do I need to supplement my horse? I didn't have to 25 years ago. Well, there was actually nutrition in the, in the hay and grain 25 years ago for your horse, where now it's like grow it fast, get another crop, mm -hmm. you know, because the farmer needs to be able to feed his kids. And there's just not a lot of nutrition nope. in it. It looks good. No, it's just filler. It just passes through the body. Yeah. Yeah. So we teach one to ask about the detoxing so they can assimilate the nutrition before, you know, people say, well, what should I change in my horse's diet? And it comes back to, can they assimilate what you're feeding first? Right. And that's when we talk about the zeolites and pulling out the heavy metals and everything that's blocking their receptor sites and then muscle testing for what your horse needs. Because if they're mercury toxic, they're not going to absorb magnesium. And that's like, you know, some people that have fibromyalgia have found that when they do the detox and take magne um, the magnesium at night before bed, that they're not having all the symptoms that they were having. 
But that's like the easy keeper horses. They're like, my horse seems like it's starving all the time and I'm trying to put him on a diet and I feel so bad because he just snickers at me, but he's so fat. It's like, you got to do a hay net. You have to let him work on something. You can't just give him a half a flake of hay and expect him to lose weight when their body is saying, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Yeah, the slow feeders and the hay nets are just so great to give them that grazing back. But then we also have to look at, you know, their base minerals and you need minerals to be able to absorb vitamins. So it's this whole long thing. And by the time people send pictures to me for a distance reading and they get back this seven page report on everything that their horse needs, they're overwhelmed. And I'm like, but this is all the horses. It says that in my distance reading, please do not take this personal. This is all the horses on the planet now. Our toxins, our our feeds, the vaccinations and wormers that are stressful to their liver and kidneys and teaching about homeopathic nosodes and it's just a whole long process. And all the classes I took, they didn't look at the whole horse. They're just like, oh, yep, here's a massage class, muscles tight, massage it. Oh, okay, well, you got four crooked feet. Yeah, we don't do feet. That's a farrier's job. Well, great. We have a crooked head and really bad teeth. Yeah, we don't do that either. Well, it's a whole horse you need to, you know, I just kept taking classes and kept taking classes. So we actually look at the teeth and the head and the body and the feet and the coat and even the smell of the horse's breath when I'm working on their atlas and access. I'll be like, oh, my God, this reeks. It smells so bad. He's got some kind of infection going on in his head. Let's go find it. You know, and none of the other body work classes would address all that. And mine does. So, yes, it's overwhelming because there's so much. But when you see it on every single horse, it's just a step. Here's step one. Here's step two. Here's step three. And then people are just like, wow, your horse is really nice. (laughs) (laughs) He's got a shiny coat and I never bathe them. When you see my home study and you see Tiki and how glowy white he is, He never saw a bottle of shampoo. He was lucky if he got hosed off after a hot ride or we went swimming in the pond. And and he's like, but he's just white and he glows because it's like the health from the inside. Mm -hmm. When I do an hour session on a horse, they dapple out and they fluff up. And the owner's like, oh, my God, he gained 20 pounds and he got four inches longer and two inches taller because you unwound everything and we're going to address everything. Yeah. Yes, it might be overwhelming. And a lot of people come in my class, but they're like, oh my God, I'm never going to look at a horse the same ever again. Another thing you said in the environmental issues is there are toxic trees. What trees are toxic to horses? Um, You need to Google for what's in your area. So when I was in um, like Folsom, cool Auburn, California area, um, whenever it rained spring and fall, we always had the ticks jumping off you know, Mm -hmm. and crawling up the horse's legs. And so I would get that war paint spot on the um, uh, fly tick stuff to help keep them off because they would just come back with like 200 ticks on them. And then in the fall, the acorns would drop. I would come back from a trip and my horse had this huge fatty deposit before his tail up on the rump, which is where he kind of got it. And um, that was the toxicity level. And the horses will just eat all these acorns that they find. So the oak trees in California were really bad. So you have to kind of look at, you know, yellow tansy, the plants in your area, what you want to, you know, take down and what's an environmental factor. I was working with an animal communicator and her little pony kept foundering, you know, and I've changed everything. And, but you haven't changed the environment, what's in her pasture that she's picking up and eating because they can eat something like 100 acorns a day and anything of one thing is going to be too much. They're just little. They just crunch them like you're eating popcorn. And you're like, I have five oak trees out here and there's no acorns on the ground. (laughs) What's wrong with this picture? So then I would give my horses more of the detox to, I couldn't go out there and do anything with all those acorns over three acres. So uh, it's how do you support the horse's system If you know that's going to be a stress, if you know your water's not great, get that little eight or $10 inline filter that goes on a hose. Well, you know, there's the horses drink out of the pond. Fine. Just offer them one garbage barrel with this filtered water and see what they choose to drink. 
you know, um, the, you know, the trees are there. Great. So I have to probably not vaccinate and not chemical worm them when he's also having the stress of eating all the acorns. It's looking at the environment and what's going on with them. When I did the 2000 miles of competition on Tiki, my endurance horse in two years, he received no vaccinations and no chemical warmers. We were doing them all year round. We went down to do 400 miles, I'm sorry, 200 miles in four days at Death Valley, Christmas and New Year's. So, I mean, we would do 150 or 200 miles on these multi-day rides and I would come back and pull shoes and turn him out. He had his blanket and his grain and his yoga and his carrot stretches, but I wouldn't touch him for 10 or 12 days after doing that 200 mile ride to let him detox and get his system back. And, you know, so it's looking at your stresses and how can you support their system we were third place for the whole West region, 2007, 2008. And I just boosted his immune system instead of vaccinating and warming when he's going to go drink water, you know, from a water trough with a hundred other horses hauled in from other States. So I would muscle test. What does he need to boost his immune system? Not, Oh my God, I got to vaccinate and stress his immune system with all this hauling and, everything. So if you go to a performance event and you see horses that are tying up, the butt muscles get really tight and they can't move. And the vets usually put them on like banamine and flush and hope that, you know, liver and kidneys are doing okay. I've walked up to those people and say, so you weren't vaccinated in the last three weeks. Yeah, but that had nothing to do with this. I said, well, then how did I know? It was a stress to the liver and kidneys, so it couldn't get rid of the lactic acid from the stress of hauling to the event and the event. I've yet to see a horse that didn't get vaccinations and wormers tie up at a sporting event. So when I was on that heavy competition schedule, I was um, supporting Tiki's immune system once they've had vaccinations, you know, they last seven or eight years in the body and he'd been on the racetrack. So he'd had more than enough vaccinations for life. So, and I can use like in my horse 102 book, um, you can use diatomaceous earth. You can use the calcium bentonite clay. You can use the zeolites. There's different ways to get rid of the parasites. You don't have to use 1200 pounds of ivermectin. I used to do the fecals, you know, we take the poop ball into the vet and they look and it would always be zero. And then all of a sudden I had tapeworm segments. Well, in California, it was hot and dry and we would water my lawn, you know, for half acre around the house so that our endurance horses could come home and have some green grass. But that's also where the dogs would poop. So yes, I had to give them ivermectin gold, but I didn't have to give them 1200 pounds worth. I muscle tested for what did he need to clear the tapeworm. And we did two other horses that were on the same grassy area. And he only needed 500 pounds out of that 1200 pound tube to clear the tapeworms. Nice. So, you know, a lot of people are giving too much wormer. It's poison. And you stress the liver and kidneys. You have to support the system. If you're going to give them poison to kill the worms, you have to support the system, get the gut flora going again, you know, the probiotics and everything. You can't just, I've seen people get bucked off. Well, what'd you do? Well, I wore my horse this morning, but it didn't have anything to do with me riding him this afternoon. <laughs> well, he's got a really sour stomach right now. I can tell you that because you just fed him poison and it also burns the mouth lining. So he's really not happy with you right now. April, today's episode was very interesting because obviously there are so many influences on our horse's environment that we can't always see very easily, but impact them greatly. So this has been very, very insightful. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Holistic Horseworks Talks with April Love. Remember to check the show notes for links to all the resources mentioned in this episode. Have a question you'd like to submit to the podcast? Email april at holistichorseworks.com for a chance to get it featured on the next episode. Loved this information? Share it with your horse friends. They'll find it helpful too. To learn more, visit holistichorseworks.com. And before you go, make sure you have a copy of our free ebook, 
Horse 101, everything you wish you had known before you got your first horse at horseacademy101.com.